Hi, I'm Rachel Meliotis, a senior editor at O'Reilly Media, and I am here with John Manning and Paris Buttfield Addison of Secret Lab to talk about mobile gaming. Thank you for joining me. Hi. Cool, please. So let's start with iOS 7. Mm -hmm. uh, it introduces some new game-specific API uh, APIs. What does this mean for mobile gaming? It's actually really interesting. The biggest thing that uh, strikes me is App Apple added this uh, feature uh, where you can link um, game controls, game controllers to your device in a really standard way. So they actually devised the specification for um, for third-party hardware manufacturers to create a, a standard for controllers. And that's really good because now every game is going to have this baseline of, of controls available to them. It's either there completely or it's not at all. Previously, there were like some patchy support for some third-party controls, um, and they're all done via some hacky ways, via the keyboard API and things like that, which weren't so good. Now, there's going to be official standard-supported controls, not from Apple, but from well-known players like Logitech and from other people as well. So that's going to be really, really exciting. Speculatively, this could be the first step in turning iOS into like a console platform, because the iPhone could have a controller attached to it, which is used to play a game on the Apple TV. Yeah. So that's a very interesting thing for developers to start thinking about, I think. Because yeah. already, right now, we have Apple, uh, sorry, AirPlay. So you can, you can uh, play a game on your iPhone and then send that to your, to your Apple TV. Now, imagine a, a world where you've got all this existing library of games that uh, the iPhone and iPad are, are famous for. Your, your iPhone is now this, ex this controller. Apple then says, oh, and by the way, now the games can run on the Apple TV, zero latency, and all the games are already there. So suddenly, the Apple TV has become a console. Interesting. So it, it, how, what has Android done to sort of say, this is where we're going with gaming? Right. Android started adding a lot of APIs to do things like high scores, friends lists, matchmaking, stuff which Apple has had for a little while, but now Android has as well. Uh, independently of that, they haven't really done too much. There's obviously the Ouya, which is the Android console, and that's a full-fledged console on its own, which yeah. you can obviously write games for, but there's not really anything like the controller API yet for Android. I suspect you could build a controller, but again, it would be the same position as iOS was before this new API, where it's a, a hack job, basically. Yeah. I mean, the Ouya is a great platform, but games that are designed for Ouya tend to be only in that marketplace. The Ouya games, not yeah. Android games. Right, and, 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 and like, there's cross-platform as well, there's porting, and, and uh, like, there's no... Th there's a bunch of really, really fantastic uh, Ouya exclusives. Like, mm -hmm. Towerfall, I've heard, is absolutely incredible, and it's the primary reason why people are buying the Ouya uh, these days. Um, but other than that, there's not really a... It's not a colossally huge platform, um, and people will only support it, that is, developers will only support it um, because they like the idea of it, not because of the colossal marketplace. Uh, do you think that, you know, handheld uh, gaming devices like the PS Vita and the 3DS are going to kind of go away because iOS? No. Oh, you, no, okay. No, I, I don't think so. Um, I think they're going to be increasingly under pressure. From uh, from iOS, I mean, right now the iPhone and, and, and iPod Touch outsell the 3DS and other handheld gaming right. platforms by by like an order of magnitude. Right now, I think it is. Um, so they're going to be under even more pressure once people realize, oh hey, the iPhone is a gaming platform. The big difference is that the, the games for like the PS Vita and the, the Nintendo handheld they cost twenty dollars plus, and they right. can't be built by small studios or, or individual people. And just because you just can't publish to those platforms yeah. without being a big studio or having a, a giant publisher behind you. So whereas the iPhone, you can build a game for a, with a very small team and then publish it without anyone else in, being involved. So you actually, same for Android. You make a good point. So do you think that the pricing of games will stay the same actually? Because you know you see a lot of either freemium right. or 99 cent games, but that doesn't seem, that seems underpriced it, not it, to like. It seems to be stabilizing where there's lots of freemium 99 cent games, mm. then there's nothing in between, and then there's lots of $15 games. Right, right. Um, um, I think that uh, the, the biggest splash recently was uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown, um, yes. which was a massive hit on uh, console and on PC, recently got ported to iOS, and it was the entire game. It wasn't like a cut down or, or um, iPhone version of, of the thing, it was the whole game. And they're, and they're selling it for 20 which is, I think, uh, the highest priced game um, that, that wasn't like priced for some... Uh, for some uh, some other reasons, reason, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, people are getting used to the idea that uh, really good content is worth a premium price. Interesting. So, so we touched upon this a little bit. What are the roles of independent developers versus um, big game studios in mobile gaming? 
<laughs> I think that uh, the independents are the ones who are going to be trying out new things a lot more than the uh, more risk averse AAA studios. Right. The independents have a lot less to lose yeah. because they can try something, whereas the AAA studios go through so many levels of essentially bureaucracy before they can make something that mm. they often kill ideas before they can make them because they might not sell, which yeah. is why you end up with Call of Duty repeated every six months. <laughs> yeah. um, what's, what's really interesting is that um, you have publishers like EA, they've created their own indie studios inside them. And so EA has oh, an indie wow. division now, yeah. which I think is fascinating because they're, they're realizing that they they're going after uh, the same kinds of ideas that uh, independent crowds right. tend to create. Um, and, and people are it, it, publishers are realizing that, that there's more of an interesting cachet. India started meaning the same thing it means in films, where it doesn't necessarily mean low budget uh, or cheap, it just means a different idea to yeah, what you get in mainstream. And yeah. That's kind of interesting. Right. It's a little a bit of a test kitchen. Right, it's a test kitchen. Guys. It's a great place to be. Right. So I know uh, one game engine that people use is Unity. Mm -hmm. And I know that that became sort of free. Um, uh, recently for mobile gaming. What's the impact of that on developers in that whole in community? That's really incredible, especially for small studios. Unity was already free to build desktop games and had been for a very long time. And becoming free for mobile just means it's going to be adopted by more and more people. It's already the most popular engine for iOS to build games Absolutely. and I suspect it's the most popular for Android as well. Mm. And by making it free, it, it, children are going to be making games and they're going to grow up with a skill set that they didn't have before one single man teams are going to be making games that they couldn't make before just because Unity is a, a pro level engine and iOS is the platform that you can get things onto whereas if you make a PC game you have to put it up for download on your site and you have to attract people to your site right. whereas iOS you've got the app store and it takes a little bit of the legwork out it's not the gold mine it used to be obviously but you can put it on the play store you can put it on the app store and then people will find it and then you don't have to do as much work as you would have so short story um, more games and better games right as a result of this. Well, I like that yeah. as a game. And more skilled right. game developers, ultimately. Right, yeah. More talent in the game development industry. Interesting. Yeah. So a final final question, mm -hmm. uh, again on game engines. Uh, do you think it's better to sort of use something like Unity that's already out there or to make your own game If engine? you want to make games, absolutely use Unity. If you're interested in coding, then it's often more interesting for developers to solve the problems of making an engine and figuring out how things are going to fit together. As a developer, the, yeah. the problems you need to solve to build your engine are fascinating and a lot of fun. Yeah. But by the time you build an engine, you've spent a lot of time and you haven't got a game. Yeah. So if you want to build a game, you start with an engine like Unity or Cocos 2D or something. Yeah. If you want to build an engine and a very small game, you can build your own engine. Yeah. Interesting. All right, well, thank you very much for joining me. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Fantastic.